The True Light, featuring Es Sayyid, El Imam Isa, El Hadi, El Mah. I would like to ask about um, Luke 23:43, where um, it says that Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, to, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. I know that it says that um, Judas was made to look like Jesus, but did Judas say this to, um, to the um, thief that was next to him? Here's the point. The answer, first of all, is if it's not in the book of John, don't believe it. <laughs> the reason why I say that is because the Christians acknowledge that John is the receiver of the book of Revelation. You follow? Now, the two books we're talking about, which is, of course, John and the book of Revelation, are the last two books to be revealed. We got one being revealed in the year 96 and the other being revealed in the year 98. We start talking about Luke and them. People do not know that Luke didn't even receive his own book. Matthew's received it for Luke. The year is 56 to 58. You follow that? He was one of Paul's followers, which 2 Timothy 4.11 confirms. His book, now let's just look at Luke for a starting, so we'll know we're up again. Okay? Luke chapter 1. Let's see what it says. Verse 1. Are you with it? No. For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth an order of declaration of those things which most surely believed amongst us, he says, when, I, when he turned this back to English, just as other people have taken upon themselves to write the things that we believe, you understand? Number two, even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses, they was back in the beginning the people who saw it, and ministers of the word, and they were out teaching the word. He's talking about these same people. Now I know that he says in number three. Read it for me, sister. It says, it seemed to me, it seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things, from the very first to write unto thee in order, most excellent, um, Theophilus. Now, is he saying that this is a revelation from heaven? Or did he just say, he decided to write this because everybody else was writing books? Listen to this man. Listen to what Luke just said. Well, everybody else wrote a book, and they were there, and they preached with Christ, but me, I am perfect in my what? Understanding. He never met Christ, but he perfectly understands what Christ said. Now I ask you again, should we believe what Luke says? According to Luke himself, he got an ego that won't wait. Listen to this. It seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first. How can he have perfect understanding of all things from the very first and he wasn't there? He never saw Jesus in the flesh. He never walked with Jesus. He wasn't in the upper room. He never broke no bread. He wasn't on the sea. How can he have perfect knowledge? This is what Christians do. They get up there and they use words like perfect knowledge and understanding when they don't even know what they're talking about. Now this man took it upon himself to write a book. And the Christians swear by the book of Luke. And they quote Luke to us. Anything that is not mentioned in John about Jesus, don't trust it. Why? Because if you go to Revelation 21, let's see what he says about this book. Because Revelation chapter 1 says this is the book of Revelation which Allah has what? Given unto who? For to show what? Read Revelation chapter 1. Um, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, uh -huh. to shew unto his servants things which must, must shortly come to pass. And sent it and signified it by? By his angel. Now this to his? To his servant. Who? John. Hey. Now this revelation says God gave it to Jesus but he sent it by an angel to John. Is this a revelation from Allah? According to this, of course. Yes. Would this be a divine revelation? Yes. Wouldn't this put this above the book of Luke? Yes. Out the window in Luke. Right. Let's look at what the Bible says. The very Bible they read tells me that John was inspired by way of an angel from the Heavenly Father to do his book. Huh? The days are over for them lies and them gimmicks. 
And if you look at the same book of Revelation, let's go to the last chapter, chapter 22, and let's go to the 18th verse, and it says what? Go ahead. For I testify. Unto every man that hears the word. Y'all can read together. Ain't nothing wrong with that. For I testify. Unto every man that hears the words of the prophecies of this book. Stop. Put the emphasis where it belongs. On the prophecies of uh, this book. Not Matthews. Not Mark. Not Luke. Not Corinthians. Not Philippines. Not Hebrews. Not Paul's book. But this book. This is what we call the Evangel, which we translate in El Quran as El Injil, the Evangel, El Injil. The book of Revelation is the Injil, not the New Testament. You Muslims stop fooling people and stop confusing people. Only the book of Revelation is the Injil, not the New Testament. We make a fool out of ourselves when we say the New Testament is the is the NGO that has all these contradictions and mistakes in it, then we have to answer why did Allah sanction it after it was tampered with? Why would he sanction the NGO in the Quran and the Bible prior to the Quran was already tampered with? Because the book of Revelation was not tampered with because they didn't understand the apocalypse of it, the message in it. They left it because they couldn't translate the meaning. The symbolism was too complicated. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew that was going to happen. Because he knew the explanation of it couldn't come until after the seal of the prophets came, Muhammad, with the Quran, the seal of the scriptures. Then when that knowledge was put here, then men would be able to understand the Quran before the end of the world. Let's go on and see what it says. 18. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man, not God, not angel, if any man shall add unto these things, God shall what? Add unto him. The plagues are written in this book. Now let's go to our perfect number to seal it. And if any man shall take away from the words of, of the book of this, this prophecy. prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city, called the New Jerusalem, of course, and from the things which are written in this book. Right? That's the confirmation of the book of Revelation. No, and this is the same John who received the book of John. Not the book of James, or letters of James, not the book of Hebrew, not the book of Philemon, not Thessalonians, not Timothy, not Galatians, not Hebrew, not Corinthians, not Romans, not none of those books written by men, not the Acts, but the book of John. And if you read the book of John, you'll get the story of Jesus. And I've translated the whole book from the original language, verse by verse, and you'll find when you get past the 18th chapter, they've inserted the name Jesus where they just said he. When they said they came to take him, they said they came to take Jesus. His name wasn't in the original manuscript. They said he. He transformed himself. And they got places in here where Jesus eludes people because he looks other than himself. And it throws people off. They get confused because he had the power to transform himself to look other than himself. It tells you in the Bible multiple places where he transformed himself. And one of them you find right in the same book we're in, St. John chapter 21, verse 1. He shows people how he transforms himself. Right in front of them. Read it? Yes, you can if you want to. After these, after these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. And on this wise, he showed himself. Notice why they word that. This is how he showed himself. On this wise, he showed himself. Now go on and notice what they mean. He showed himself, they looked at him, but they did not recognize him. Go ahead. They were together, Simon Peter and Thomas called Didymus, and Nathaniel of Cana and Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee, and two other of his, of his disciples. Simon Peter said, said unto them, I go a fishing. They say unto him, We also go with thee. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately, 
and that night they caught nothing. But when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Then Jesus said unto them, Children, have you any meat? They answered him, No. And he said, Did you make note that they didn't recognize Jesus so far? They looked right at Jesus and they didn't recognize him? Because he just said, this is how he's going to show himself. But on this wise showed he himself. Go ahead. Notice they're going to not recognize him. Remember, this was Jesus, who's supposed to die for their sins, who suffered on the cross for them, who was in the bowels of the earth three days and three nights, who was God incarnate, the Son of God. But here they are looking right at him, and they don't recognize him. Please, someone tell us why. Go ahead. And he said unto them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. Make note that Jesus has the power here to make fish commit suicide. See, the Christians have a way to make it look the other way. Jesus made the fish multiply. He made fish commit suicide. That's what he just did. He had the power to order fish to jump into a net so their destination would be a piece of bread. <laughs> that's the power. That's some, that's some power from heaven there. But it says in the Quran, the law has supported Jesus with his word and with his Holy Spirit. Jesus had the power to perform miracles. Nobody takes that away from him. As long as he did it in Allah's name and not his own. Go ahead. They cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. Therefore that disciple whom Jesus loved said unto Peter, It is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he girt his fish's coat unto him, for he was naked, and he did cast himself into the sea. And the other disciple came in a little ship, for they were not far from land, but as it were two hundred cubits, dragging the net with fishes. As soon then as they were come to land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid thereon and bread. Jesus said unto them, Bring of the fish which you have now caught. Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land full of great fishes, and a hundred and fifty and three. And for all there were so many, yet was not the net broken. Jesus said unto them, Come and dine. None of the disciples thus asked him, Who art thou? Knowing that it was the Lord. That means they looked at him, but they didn't dare ask him, Is he Jesus? They knew it was him, by the way, things he did, but they didn't recognize him. I'm just going to give you a list of other quotes. Matthew 17, 2. Somebody turn to it. John's 21, 1. Someone turn to it. And now Mark 9, 2. Now these are all of them. And notice John is the one we're going to listen to. Or you can look at the same book, Shack, Luke 9, 29. Going to tell you right there that Jesus had the power to transform himself to look other than himself. Then when we go to the Holy Quran, in the fourth chapter, and the 157th verse, it's going to confirm it. Because Allah is going to use a word in there that Muslims in Arabic know, should be, which is sheen, beh, ha, which means looks like. If I said you look like them, I said, huwa tashbim miflahua. Huwa yesbim miflahua. He looks like him. Or you look like him. The word shabba means to look like, to look like somebody else. You understand? Not like, like the word misla, not like in action. He acts like him. No. You got one of them? No. Which one? I'm reading the one in Luke. And as, this is Luke chapter 9, verse 29. Wow. And as he prayed, the fashion of his consonant was altered. And his raiment was white and glittering. And between it tells you that these are two different statements. Don't let a Christian say, yes, that's me. That means he made himself turn glittering white. Well, if Jesus had the power to turn himself to look glittering white, he had the power to change the way he looks. But it tells you right there, his countenance was what? Altered. It says right there, and he prayed and the fashion of his countenance. Now, let's go back to Genesis. If we want to understand fashioning, what did he say? Did he what? Fashion man in his... Is he talking about his spirit or he's talking about his body? What is he talking about? He said, man is fashioned like him. Allah is called Al-Musawir, the fashioner. You follow what I'm saying? Jesus' countenance was changed. Jesus had the power to make himself look like other than himself right in front of people. This is what your Bible says, Christian world. This is what the Quran supports and backs up. 
Read another one, John 21, 1. Be after these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. And on this wise showed he himself. This is how he showed himself. Mark 9, 2, someone. And after six days, Jesus taketh with him Peter and James and John, and leadeth them up into a high mountain apart uh -huh. by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. What happened to him? Transfigured before them. Does anybody know what the word transfigured means? Huh? Does anyone, anybody have an idea what the word transfigured Does anybody have a dictionary? Not a Christian Bible dictionary. A regular dictionary. What does it say? The word transfigured? It means... So, someone else look up the word transformed. I have the word transfigured. What kind of dictionary are you reading? That's important, see, because the white man says it is true. So let's know what the white man says. I have a... <laughs> Webster's Dictionary. Oh, that's true. <laughs> what does it say? To change outward appearance. To change what? Outward appearance. So we ain't talking about no light coming outside of Jesus. We're talking about the way Jesus looked outwardly speaking, unless Webster's wrong or the Bible's wrong. And if, uh, according, according to y'all who worship the white man, facts is facts. As I say it, truth is truth. You understand what I'm saying? Jesus had the power to transform himself. Turn your holy Quran to the fourth chapter, the 157th verse. And for their saying in both, verily we have slain the Messiah, Jesus, son of Notice Mary. Notice the word, inna katalanna. See that? El Messiah Isa ibn Maryam Rasulullah. And it says for them saying that they killed. Killed. See that? No. What about it? Verily we have slain the Messiah, Jesus son of Mary, the apostle of God. They what? Wama. But they slew him Salahu. not. Wama. And they crucified Salahu. him not. They did not kill him, nor did they have him up on a cross. The Quran makes a distinction between dying and being crucified. Because a lot of Muslims, like Ahmadid them, think that Jesus was on the cross like David and taken down alive. Because they have the stories of the Talmud mixed up. Because the Jews tricked them. This Quran teaches us that Jesus was not crucified, meaning on any cross, nor did he die. You understand? There's a difference. Go on, what does it say after that? Well, that can... But it... Became became Level. dubious unto them. And but it made to look like that for them. Lehum. You see that? No. You know what it tells you about them? What well, Arabic word they're going to use there is azunni. Azunni means uh, azunu. I think so. If you say uh, Isa, did you see Abdul Malik? I say uh, azunu. Who was kind of He was in his house, I think. <laughs> That's what it says. And right here in the Quran, they use the same thing. What does it say? And indeed, those who differ therein are only in doubt about it. They have no knowledge about the real matter. They don't know. What they do is what? Pursuing only a conjecture. And that word they have for conjecture means I think in Arabic. Not I think like in thinking, but I think like in I think so. It could be. And when you read this Bible and start reading about the crucifixion of Christ, and see all the contradictions, you realize that people like Luke and them said, I think so. I think I know. I'm not really sure. None of them are sure what happened. Who was there? Who was there? Peter and John. And in Peter's book, he don't talk about it. So what book should you listen to? Whose book should we listen to? Did Mary Magdalene write a book? Who else was there? Peter? And John. did Peter write about it in his book? No. Was Matthew there? No. Was Luke there? No. Was James there? No. Was Paul there? No. So of course, as the Quran teaches us, all they have is conjecture. All they do is think they know what they're talking about. Because they didn't see it. And the man who wrote the story was John. So I tell Muslims, read the book of John. I tell Christians, according to your writings, in the book of Revelation, John is the person who received the revelation from the angel for Jesus, so we can listen to him. 
And then according to your book, John chapter 1, let's go back and see what it says. John chapter 1, verse 1, he says, In the beginning was the word. In the beginning was this word, and this word was in and Allah, in possession of Allah. وَكَلِمَةَ Allah, And this word was Allah. What is this word? This word is kun. Kun. Kun fire kun. Allah merely says to a thing, come into existence, and into existence it comes. Don't let anybody say be and it is. That's not no translation. Kun means to exist from Cohen universe. In the beginning he created a whole universe. And into that universe he placed everything. Because when he said to Mary to have a baby, he merely said kun, fire kun. And he took that angel and transformed him into a human being. And he went into Mary. And she conceived. It says right in Holy Quran chapter 19 that he gave her a baby. 1919 to be exact. Couldn't be any more perfect than that. It was the word wahaba. The Arabic word wahaba means to give somebody something physically. Go ahead, y'all.